Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm not going to rush Clay Woman. Clay Woman is a, a a creature who knows time and the cycles of the birth and deaths of stars. Um, and so I, uh, whenever she feels ready to come back to us, um, so nice to see all the lovely SVA faces. Again, I apologize for that interruption in our work together. Uh, apparently Zoom bombing is indeed a thing. Um, I have been fortunate not to have experienced it yet this semester or this whole year of being online. Clay Woman, uh, you might not know about the intricacies of these technologies, but sometimes uh, malicious actors who have nothing better to do find their way into the, the technology and uh, disrupt things for no reason other than maliciousness. I presume you're past such things in the Marillion Galaxy. Um, no, we're not. And um, I have my suspicions that a lot of this was orchestrated by some of my, um, I don't want to say enemies, but um, rivals perhaps in the Marillion Galaxy. Um, you might not be very happy that I've gotten an audience with Earthlings. And, um, you know, I think that, um, that, well, there's a group, there's a couple, they're, they're called the Jennifer Sisters. And uh, they are um, extremely jealous of, um, well, everyone. And they do try to stop um, any, you know, they're, they're, they're a singing act. And, um, they're the only entertainment that's allowed in the Marillion galaxy. That's how um, territorial they are. So I'm sure they heard I was doing this and it's the first time I've done a video from the Marillion galaxy. So I do think that they might have tried to get in here and really throw us off, you know, very, very dark, dark energy. But um, I have some um, connections. So rest assured that everyone who was interrupting us earlier will have a, um, you know, they won't be punished or anything, but they'll have a lot of extra psychological stress over the next few days. Um, they will be consumed with self-doubt um, in uh, probably about an hour or so, and it will be so bad they won't be able to function for a few days. It's not something that I've done, that's just what happens. So, thank you, Clay Woman. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, really, yes, honestly, feel sorry for them. In any case, um, you know, since things really went a little off there, I'm not going to tell the whole story of my arrival here um, to Earth and finding Earth and everything, but what I am going to do is um, kind of reset us all with a little meditation, a little group meditation that we can do together that hopefully will make everyone. Uh-oh, everything all right? <clears throat> Hopefully a little group meditation that we can all do together um, that will, uh, you know, take us, um, take us back. So anyway, um, I would like everyone to close your eyes if you feel safe doing so. And, um, Turn your head slightly to the left. And then ever so slightly up a little bit. Now over to the right. Yes. And then down. And uh, I'd say another millimeter to the left, back to the center a bit. And now, I'd like you to imagine that you're in a, uh, a tiny bowl and the bowl is filled with children. For some reason there's a, a, um, a they've, been, they've been placed here by, um, and uh, they're playing around and you're trying to get to the side of it, but it's uh, very difficult. And you're trying to climb up the side, but it's slippery and you're getting very upset about it. And the children start to sing and they're singing a song that um, 
is in tune, but it also is a little dissonant and is reminding you of the time in your life when you had a very stressful experience. So you really want to get out of this bowl. And so what you do is you climb around up to the top of it and you jump off and then you start walking down the street and you realize that you're in a, um, a suburban town and it's an American suburban town with American architecture, with American, um, American trees and American light. And you realize to yourself that interestingly enough, American light is different. It's not the same as perhaps, you know, um, as um, Croatian light or as um, um, Irish light. It's just very different. It has sort of a, um, it, it, you notice that it, the, 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 the sky seems to flash a little bit because it's so, um, it, it's constantly on the move and constantly, the actual sky is literally worried about what it's going to do with its life. And so you're realizing that, and that stresses you out, but you keep walking, you walk down the street a little bit more and then you look in the distance and you see a crane. And you look at the crane, it's very far in the distance, but there's something you can't quite figure out if, if it's the animal crane or if it's the type of crane that you would use in construction. And so as you're about to ask the crane what type of crane it is, you realize that you're standing on a, on a spoon and you're, so you're sitting there on the spoon, looking up at the crane, wondering what the crane is. And you realize that, you know, you're sitting on the very special part of the spoon. There's two parts of it. One part is a sort of, could be any utensil. And then there's another part of the spoon that is rather iconic. I think we all know what we're talking about. And that's where you are. You're on that part of the spoon and you use, and you stand on it feeling pretty great that you've gotten yourself out of the bowl, onto the spoon, onto the greatest part of the spoon. And you're looking up at the crane and you say to the crane, Crane, I have a question for you. And the crane looks at you and it says, and you say, I just want to know, are you uh, the animal crane or the type of crane that one would use in construction? And the crane looks back at you really exhausted and it says you know i don't feel like answering that right now because i've had a really long day and um the you know i tried to do i went to like 16 meetings today and um i can't give you an answer because i don't even know anymore i've tried to figure it out i don't know you tell me and you take a moment to um you just take it all in you really take in that the the you take in and you accept the ambiguity right there and you accept it and you think you know what it's fine i've got my spoon i'm standing on the most important part of the spoon and i'm ready to go and so then you just smile a bit and now what i'd like you to do is worry worry about well, what you're going to do with yourself now that things are opening up, worry about finances, and worry about death, worry about technical difficulties, worry about, well, if you've said something earlier today on social media that might get you in trouble later, worry about all these things. Really take it in, let it wash over you. All right, great. You, sh you can open your eyes now and you should feel wonderful and absolutely refreshed and ready to go about the day. So I hope that um, that was a reset for everyone after the um, incredibly um, shocking beginning to our evening together. And um, I'd like to uh, invite Jeremy back and see if uh, perhaps we could have dialogue about yeah. our lives interspecies dialogue not yes yeah, absolutely uh, quite a privilege um so 
I guess I, I had a few questions that I wanted to ask you as, as our group starts thinking about what they might have to say and what are the things on the mind that you're mm -hmm. most privy to. I, I wonder, you know, you started, you talked about um, in the meditation, you talked about uh, the American light and I'm actually kind of surprised that you know what America is. Uh, I mean, it, it, it is rather young and recent for, uh, you know, a, a being such as you. And, and I, I don't know, we, we in, the, in, the, in the world, in the earth, we, we divide the earth up sort of by mm -hmm, yes. called nations. And I mean, do you have nations in the Merillion galaxy? We used to, we don't really anymore, but um, it's hard not to know about America wherever you are in the entire universe. I mean, honestly, it's one of the most, uh, just on a decibel level, it is the loudest society in the entire, um, it, that I know of, you know? I mean, I do, I keep in touch with a lot of, I mean, I've been to Earth, you know, I always, I keep up on what societies are doing well, you know, there was, the Romans were really big for a while, the Egyptians, um, the, there was the Chinese emperors and, all sorts of great stuff, but nothing's really gotten to the level of complete and utter deafening. A deafening roar is really what America is like. You just, you know, if you're, if you're an intergalactic creature and you're coming around, you know, through the, through the you know, you go by the earth, you go by and you're here, you literally, you can hear it from very far away. Wow. It sort of sounds like EDM music. <laughs> uh, yeah that it's just all of it together at one sound it has that sort of beat to it <laughs> it's not intentional it just comes out like that when you conglomerate all the sounds together so do you think uh it, has america been getting louder or has has the music changed from this land uh of late? a little bit quieter last spring because of the pandemic? Yeah, a little bit, just a little bit. Wasn't as much as anywhere else. It just was like, you know, a little bit less, you know. But have you um, ever had pandemics in the Marillion galaxy? We have, um, you know, we've had uh, several of them, but um, we haven't for a long time because we've, um, we've just stopped, um, you know, well, we do live very separately now. Um, which we found is a better way to stay friends with each other. <laughs> yeah, maybe something we could learn. Uh, do you, I mean, I know you drink a lot of water too. I love water. Does that help with the avoiding pandemics? It really does. Well, and also it's just one of the, my favorite things in, you know, it's just, it's a great drink because, you know, other drinks really are very complicated, but water just has this beautiful, clear, stillness to it you know it just it sits there and it just you could look at it you could drink it you could do whatever but it doesn't change and uh i just find that beautiful I mean, it's not something you could say about for juice for instance do you ever i mean as you're drinking your water relatively separate in the marillion galaxy trying to avoid the jennifer sisters like do you ever get lonely no yeah. No. No, never been lonely, really. Not in 500 million years? Well, I think I did get lonely about 350 million years ago for, let's say, like a thousand years. But it seems like such a small time to me now. But I do remember thinking for, a, you know, for those thousand years, where is everyone? And I realized that it was just that I wasn't looking in the right direction. <laughs> For a thousand years, you were looking in the wrong direction. Yeah, I was looking at this one dot and I thought, and I got confused and I thought, and I realized that all of my friends were in the other direction. I finally turned around. <laughs> Which direction are you facing now? I don't know really. I think that, you see, I'm in a, um, I have one of the Zoom backgrounds that is um, great because it, um, it, um, it looks like I'm on Earth. I don't know really what it looks like to you at all, but it's supposed to look like I'm on Earth. And uh, I made it look a little bit like my friend Jennifer Constelta Nelte's apartment. And um, so 
that's where I usually stay when I go to Earth, but I haven't gone in a long time, but I don't know. What does it look like to you? Does it look all right? Yeah. Background? Yeah, we're, I mean, we're pretty inaccessible on Earth these days, so that's, it's quite understandable. But right, yeah, right, right, yes. Here or two recently. Yes. Um, but no, it looks, it looks very nice. Those seem pictures on the wall. Do you have, do, is your family still alive, Claymon? Um, no. They've all been, you know, very, well, I do have, I mean, I haven't spent, I mean, didn't have, my parents I knew a little bit very early on, but um, they were, um, you know, it, everyone in the Marillion Galaxy has a little bit of a difficult relationship with their parents because of the whole birthing system, wherein, you know, you, um, children are born and they're incredibly violent when they're first born. And so the parents have to be protected from them and uh, so the parents are taken away. There's armed security around after the birth, and the children are incredibly uh, agitated because of, mostly because of the music that was playing in the womb the whole time. And so when they come out, then they have to separate the children from the parents for about three years, and then they reintroduce them. And even though this is a common experience with everybody, there's always this sense of, um, you know, Children are, the parents are afraid of the children on some level and the children pick up on that. So it takes a lot of work to get uh, parents and children really back into a, a good vibe. Wow. Uh, yeah. How, I mean, is that, I guess, I mean, do you have war in the Marillion galaxy? I, oh, I study we, politics, so I, I want, kind of want to know about these things. We used to, we used to have a lot of wars. There was a, a whole um, system that, you know, of, of fighting that was rather choreographed. I mean, we really loved it so much that even when there wasn't anything to fight about, we would really just literally get together and say, what can we fight about? And so then there would be these large, um, fight, you know, we would break off and stuff and it was going on for ages and blood and everywhere all over the place. And then one time, um, uh, Rachel just said, you know, hey everyone, I, and everyone looked at her, all several billion of us in the galaxy looked at her at once and she said, we said, what? And she said, well, I don't think we should do this anymore. And everyone stopped and looked at each other and said, I think she's right. So we just stopped. We haven't had a single war ever since. Wow. So what you're saying is humanity needs a, a Rachel. Yes, she, she, you do. But the problem is whenever one comes around, you either ignore her or um, kill her. Hmm. Yeah, I think we've done that a few times. Yeah. Um, I mean, in your time, relating to earth have there been any political leaders or figures or i don't know just people that have been your been of interest to you where you thought they they could be our rachel well i wouldn't go that far i mean it takes a lot to do a rachel you know it's really uh, it's, it's you know there's there's a very very um ex you know rachel's an extreme example of um incredible persuasive powers <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll say, but what I do would say is that there was, um, I do really like, no one else liked him, but I liked Charlemagne a lot. <laughs> and um, I really got along well with, um, with uh, well, he wasn't a world leader, but Hans Christian Andersen. Yeah. And um, so there were a few that I really did enjoy, a um, few people that I met. I didn't, um, I, uh, I'm trying to think, you know, it's like they all blend into each other a lot from the world leaders that I've met, you know, because the funny thing is, especially in the days before media, it was very easy to meet them, you know, because um, there wasn't any television and they it wouldn't, you know, if they said that they'd met me, well, it just didn't travel that much and it was hard to, you know, it would just go down as like, oh, there's another crazy king saying he met an alien. And so it was very easy to be friends with a lot of these people. 
and uh, I just really enjoyed it. I loved um, her. And there's an early Canadian prime minister I'm trying to think of, but I can't remember his name right now, but he was just fun. He was just a, a laugh, a real laugh, yeah. <laughs> what does make you laugh? What makes me laugh? Yeah. Um, I, you know, summer, really. I just can't get enough of it. And I really find it funny that it gets so warm and then everyone, um, people, uh, I love the way people act during it on earth. I just laugh the whole time when I watch it. Yeah, we're about to have, I think, a very happy summer here. I think, think so, yes. I'm planning on coming for a while. One second, I have to go adjust something. Okay. I'm back now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What did you have to adjust? Oh, the door. Well, so I, I, okay, so we've talked a little bit about politics and politics, the Merlin Galaxy. I'm wondering about, since this is the art and politics lecture series, I'm wondering about art. So you mentioned the Jennifer sisters. What is art like in the Merlin Galaxy? Um, it, it, you know, it's, um, it can be really good if you can get past the Jennifer sisters and their restraining orders. Because, you know, what happens is that they've got, um, they do like a, um, you know, they've got control of the media and it's just the two of them. And um, they, you know, have their song playing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, we don't have 24 hours and it's not seven, but um, for your purposes, you know. I like to make it easy. So they'll do this and the song is not that great, but we all pretend to like it. And um, the thing about them is that they don't even know about each other. They're singing in perfect harmony right next to each other, but they're so self-involved that they don't really know. They think that they're, they each think that they're one, one, they don't even know it's a duo, duo, duo. They don't know. So, you know, that's um, something that we all have to contend with, but we do have a lot of underground art that, that, that they just don't know about. You know, we'll do, we'll try to meet together. And then whenever we do, if they find out about it, it's very similar to what happened at the beginning of the Zoom meeting. They send their agents. Yeah, they send their agents and it's very- Fascinating. Did you have any, well, you know, a lot of the, I mean, a lot of the big questions here on earth are shrouded in mystery. So I feel like we have a special opportunity in speaking to, to someone of your stature and uh, if you'll forgive uh, age. Um, I wonder, do you, do you know anything about the origins of art in the human species? Mm. Well, you know, I was around, I, you know, I have to say that when humans sort of transitioned from being, um, you know, less, uh, um, what do you say, like, um, they transitioned a bit from being uh, more, you know, not doing agriculture to doing agriculture. That was a big day. And it, well, it wasn't really one day, but it was like a week. And it was very fast how it happened. And I have to say that we were all watching with rapt attention and we said, look, that particular primate on that planet there, they're gonna start planting seeds and things are gonna get really interesting. And so I'd say it was about a year even before the seeds that the, that the painting started. And it started in one cave and I was there, I was visiting, it was, um, a family of three um, and uh, they were having an argument and the, um, the small one was talking to the taller one and trying to say, no, you don't understand what I'm trying to say. And the larger one was like, I know completely what you're trying to say and I just think you're full of shit. And the smaller one said, no, you don't. And there was this and the, the third one was looking around and just pacing back and forth, very upset, and went over, took a rock, and started carving a picture of how ridiculous 
they thought the other two look. And that was the first painting. Huh. That's very interesting. Does art have a similar origin in the Marillion Galaxy? Were you around for the beginning of art in the Marillion Galaxy or did that Oh, no, happen? no, no, I wasn't around for that. That was around for a long <clears throat> I was around when the Jennifer sisters started to consolidate power though. And that was a, that was a dark time. I guess, you know, one reason I'm asking about the origins of art and one reason I feel we have much to learn from you is, you know, human beings, um, well, we obviously live a lot less long than you do. And I think that's one reason we're not maybe as good at uh, making things, at, at, at getting involved in projects that will be long lasting and that take mm -hmm. generations. I mean, I guess we sort of used to do things like that with the Notre Dame Cathedral or the Great Wall of China, you know, things that took generations, but we don't, we don't do that sort of thing so much anymore, we human beings. And I wonder if you have, you have any advice for how we creatures with such short lifespans can think uh, cosmically, as it were? Right, well, what I like to say is that, um, you know, you should take advantage of your short lives. Um, well, which is a really, you know, I have to say, I do come from a privileged position living so long and you get, you know, I sort of feel silly speaking this way to you. But what I have always suggested to humans is, you know, if you've got a project that isn't gonna take much longer than a human lifespan, you have to think ahead. And so let's say you want to write a book and you think this book is going to take a hundred thousand years to write. Well, what you would do is that you'd start writing it very slowly, every day maybe put a little bit of a part of a letter, not the whole letter, just like one part of it. And the next day put a little bit of another part and you sit back down. And, um, you know, so, I mean, by the time you're 70, you've only got, you know, a couple of few, not very much, you've just got a paragraph perhaps, you've worked on it your whole life. So what you do is you find someone who's about mm, 12 and you start teaching them the next step in the story and you tell them how it's eventually going to end in a hundred thousand years and they have to take it on as their life's work to then work through every day writing a little bit, and another bit of a part of the word and the sentence a little bit. And then before they die, about 15 years before they die, they've got to find someone else. Now, there's no guarantees with this system because obviously, you know, the future people might not be very reliable. Someone might forget. It's an extremely long game of telephone. But what I think is that it's worth it. And I know it's very difficult for you to think in terms of, well, what the hell am I going to do? How am I going to get this? I, I'm not going to get paid for this. You know, where am I going to do this work? Well, it's only one little bit of a, a, a part of a letter every day. You can make time for that. And live the rest of your life and send it along. And then in a hundred thousand years, the book will be done and some future civilization will read it and they'll have absolutely no idea who wrote it because the records won't go back that far. But it's a good way to think about, you know, um, having a little bit of yourself live on, I suppose. I admit to not always being optimistic that the human species has another 100,000 years. Well, you might not. But this is a method maybe that we might. Yeah. Well, I'd say, you know what it is? It's a, it's a great, um, it's, if you're working on this method, it's really a, a matter of, it's a very helpful thing to do, isn't it? It's sort of placing a bet on your survival. Well, with that, maybe maybe we should have a wider conversation with all the the artists and the students and the, mm, the scholars yeah. in the room. Um, 
as, as ever enlightening. These are some questions in my research on the Morelian galaxy, which is a, a side project admittedly, but um, yeah. that I've been wanting to ask you for a long time. So, um, but I saw, I believe Athena um, has a question. And anyone else after Athena, if people, you can use the raise your hand uh, uh, or you can write stack in the chat like I just did as people know from mm -hmm. my classes as well. Um, so Athena, go ahead. Can you hear me, Athena? I'm gonna skip to Ian and come back to you, Athena, if you hear me. Go ahead, Ian. Hi. Um... Thank you for coming, by the way, first off. Um, I'm curious, um, since you've obviously seen so much more than we have, um, and you've been to more places and you've seen more species, what is something you think, regardless of who you are, or where you're at, unifies us? Like, what's something you think you find everywhere, regardless? Mm. That is a wonderful question. and. Um... I really love it so much because it is very, it's something that I've always want. I, I feel that um, when I think of what unifies you in a funny way, that there, there are so many things that unify you. And I think that one of the problems with your species is that you, um, you, not all of you, but in the general culture, there's this the effort to make sure that whatever is unifying is um, that you don't think about it too much. Think about all the thing, ways that you're different. But there is a, um, I think that what I love about humans is that, that there is this irrepressible, there's this, just this desire to, um, to exist, to be with each other, to, um, to build things, to, to create in the face of such a short life, in the short time that you have. And um, and you all really do have this. I, I think it's something that um, not every species I see has this. This sort of um, this restlessness. You know, there's a lot of um, different planets where there's just it's just the sense of resignation all over the place. But the humans, it's not like that. You're only resigned if you're if you're beaten into it, I suppose, by your culture or something. But you're very nature is to be restless and inquisitive and to um and to and to reach out to each other i don't know if that makes sense but that's my general sense thank you uh while i'm waiting for the next question clay woman i guess i'll ask some of my other interests that you might have some insight into do you know <laughs> what stonehenge is oh, i do yes <laughs> yes well you know the funny thing about stonehenge is um that it was actually um, built by um, a friend of mine who was, it was kind of a practical joke because what they thought was, well, we'll go down to earth. And uh, uh, it was, you know, my, it was um, not Maria, but it was our mutual friend, uh, Rachel. And um, they said, you know, Rachel said, you know what I'm gonna do? And I said, what? And she goes, well, you keep going to this earth place. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down there I'm just going to put a lot of rocks in a in 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 a, in a sort of a um a, uh, what do you call it? Not position uh, in positions that seem significant, and they'll never they'll they'll talk about it forever. So it's a a, a prank. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Huh. Uh, are there other pranks that? I mean, they're all over the place, really. You know, we've done a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things, but some things really are real, you know. I mean, there's like, well, the thing is that the pyramids, some of us, we made some of them, but some of them you made too. <laughs> so Ben Carson was right. You know, the <laughs> pyramids are <laughs> a uh, alien project. Oh, did he say that? Yeah, yeah. That's very interesting that it got that far. Hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I, Stack continues to be open. Uh, any other students have burning questions for Clay Woman this evening? 
I could just keep talking forever basically with you play woman, but I'll give it to Genesis. Hello. Hello. I'm sure you're, you're probably gonna get this a lot, but like again, thank you for coming and for sticking through with this, despite <laughs> the, the rough start at the beginning. But oh, my pleasure. Um, something I'm curious now about is that uh, with how much, like how much you've experienced, I'm curious about what's your, like uh, I guess advice with, uh, with like self doubts since you mentioned that the people that interpret us would be having those a lot recently. Oh yes, well you know. I have, you know, it's funny because although I haven't really been lonely much, I have had periods where I have doubted, you know, what am I doing? What am I doing with this time? I mean, there was, there was a thousand years I was looking in the wrong direction, but there was also another hundred thousand years where I just, I just stared at a wall, you know, thinking, what am I going to do next? I don't know what to do with myself. And the thing is, you know, I've got the time to do that. And that I think makes um, self-doubt for my species very different than for yours because we, um, well, we can have it. We know we've kind of got a lot of time to um, figure it out if we do have it. So it doesn't um, hit us as hard, I think, in some ways. It's sort of like you, you just sit with it and you look and you look for a long time and um, it's not really as um, painful, but for you, I think because of the immediacy of everything, for your species, it's very, um, it can be crushing. And um, so, but the thing I would say is for humans, my general advice is, you know, think of it this way. You're a primate living on this tiny rock, really, um, in, you know, in a very, I mean, from my perspective, it's a very isolated part of the galaxy. There's not a lot around you. Um, you don't have much information for what you're doing here at all. There's not, you know, on other planets, there's a lot of times, you know, they, they figured out a lot about, you know, exactly what they are, why they're there, all that sort of thing. And you've got such little information about it and you're thrust into this. And you've got about, you know, 70 to 90 years to live and no one tells you what you're supposed to do with that time. And, you know, I think you should really be a little less hard on yourselves because the fact that you get, you know, whatever you do with that is really quite an accomplishment, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any, um, any sense, but that's my general perspective on it as an outsider. You ever... Um... Uh, do you ever take humans to visit the Marillion Galaxy? I have taken a couple with me and um, they've really enjoyed it. Any artists or? No, no one that you would know of. I just took, you know, a few random, I mean, I, there's been a few friends here and there that I've met that I've said, you know what, I think you'd appreciate it. And my whole, my plan is, you know, I do, I did think that when, if things get really rough for you, I do have a bit of a, you know, backup plan to try to fit a lot of you in my cart. Your what? My cart. Your cart? What? Yeah, you know, well, that's how I get back and forth. It's a cart that I have. It's a wooden cart, and I just get in it, and it goes. But anyway, I go, go back and forth in that. But I've got a lot of room in the back. So I think that I could take a lot of you with me if perhaps there was like a nuclear conflagration or something like that. I think I could bring a lot of you with me and maybe set up a colony. That's my plan. I mean, the problem is, is that it's not a fun journey. It's very rocky. There's a lot of turbulence and um, you'd be in close quarters with each other. But, um, you know, if it comes to that, you know, let's keep in touch. Lifeboat honors. Yeah. SBA. yeah. I feel like this group could come. You know, I feel like everyone here, I would, not, not the ones who came at the very beginning of the old <laughs> Zoom, they would not be invited. I don't think that they would enjoy it. And they don't seem like they would be very, I mean, to have to be in close quarters with them seems like it would be very difficult. Could push them out though. But those of you that are here right now seem extremely friendly and I think would um, we would have a nice time on the journey. So this, uh, this call is clearly taking a lot of Earth's energy just to transmit. Um, hmm. so I think we have time for maybe one more question, if there's anyone else from the group who 
would like to get on staff. Go for it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. um, I'll ask a second question. Um, again, because you've seen so much, how much of a role do you think art and entertainment plays in the grand scheme of everything? Well, I think it plays a, a huge role because it's sort of a way that you communicate with each other about things that you can't explain. Um, you know, um, and there's, you know, because you live in a, in a bit of a mystery, you know, like you don't know what's going on. You don't know if there's what happens after you die. And I mean, I'm not going to tell you either, but I do, but the, um, you know, it just would, it, honestly, if I did, it would ruin everything. Um, and it's nearly not, it would be like cheating, I think. But so what, you know, because of that, you, um, you like to, you know, I think that when you do make art, it's sort of a way that you, you, you try to um, talk about these things that you can't really put into words. And I just, I, it's really great. I mean, some of it's not, not um, you know, technically that good, but um, I, um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's one of the ways that you, um, you work out your restlessness and um, I really enjoy it. I particularly enjoyed the situation comedy from the 1970s, Mary Tyler Moore. I thought that was just one of, one of the greatest um, things I've seen that humans have done. It just was so sublime. There was, I don't know if a lot of the younger people on here know about that one, but there was one newscaster on it who was just so funny. And a lot of us, we would tune in, you know, and watch it. And uh, we really got a big kick out of it. Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah, it was so great, really. Really loved it. Um, other other artworks in the history of humanity that have that have touched you? Well, yes, I really liked um I mean, well, I do love I love, you know, I knew I was very close with Aeschylus and um loved a lot of his plays. I can't really remember them now, but um I do remember going to a lot of the shows back then and um it was, um, you know, really fun. Very, um, very uh, great. Why the scene? <laughs> Is there a performance in the Marillion Galaxy? Well, yes, but as I told you, it's um. That's right. It's restricted. Yeah, restricted. It's very sad. I don't know. Hopefully, we can get out of this. I mean, we have problems with monopolies here. Oh no! Yes. You know. Terrible. Amazon. Mm. Um, well, I, I really want to offer a deep appreciation for these words of wisdom, play woman. Uh, I, you know, it's, it's a career making interview as it were for me. I've waited long <laughs> to be able to ask you some of the questions I've had in researching your history. Um, and, you know, I know the, uh, the students will leave here with, well, the ability to do something with the words you've left us with this evening. Well, and honestly, it's a career making moment for me too. And, um, and I do think, you know, clearly a lot of people feel, felt very threatened about us coming together. So, you know, I mean, as difficult as the beginning of this was, I think we should keep that in mind that, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have come here if they, there wasn't something for them to worry about. As it were. <laughs> Peace doesn't come easily. <laughs> and we still don't have our Rachel. Still. No, we don't, but you know, I'll figure something out. Um, well, thank you very much, Jeremy, and thank you everyone for, for sticking by with this whole thing, really. I really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. And uh, please, you know, make, are, are you vaccinated yet? I did get the second shot, so I can come to Earth in two weeks. We look forward to it. Oh, yes, I'm, I do too. I'm really excited to come back finally. Uh, all right, uh, one last time. Uh, we'll meet again in two weeks. I don't know if you can make a clay woman, but in two weeks we have Samir Gandesha uh, oh. for the end of the semester. So oh, uh, lovely. Well, I'll, I'll try to come by, definitely. Uh, um, thank you, all the students. Thank you to clay woman. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, and see you all soon. 
Yes, thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye, everybody. Good night.